Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor Conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Jamie Holden here. I'm so happy you decided to join us this week. Well, this week, I want to do an Easter episode for you guys. I want to take some time together to look at how Jesus spent his last week on earth before his crucifixion. It is so interesting when you really take time and look at it. Let me ask you, what would you do if you knew this was the last week of your life? I've been thinking about this question as I took some time to read through the four gospel accounts of Jesus' life from Palm Sunday through Easter. And as I began looking at some of the specific ways he spent his last days on earth, a few stood out to me as priorities followers of Christ should emulate. Jesus set an amazing example that we can follow, so let's get started looking at it together. Number one, Jesus didn't try to please people. The week starts with a triumphal entry. Men, women, and children waving palm branches and throwing their cloaks before him saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It was the pinnacle of Jesus' popularity. The people loved him. They treated him like a rock star that day. Anyone else would have been tempted to ride this wave of popularity, to try to make friends and influence people, at least try to cozy up to the religious leaders and avoid what was coming at the end of the week. But Jesus didn't do that. He didn't high-five and fist-bump the religious leaders when he went to the temple. Instead, he overturned the money changers' tables in the temple and told the religious leaders exactly how they had corrupted the true worship of God for profit and power. I literally thought reading Matthew, could he have said anything more to tick them off? I mean, why? Because Jesus didn't live his life following the fickle feelings of the crowd. Instead, his life was dedicated to fulfilling God's plan for his life. He knew this included what we call the triumphal entry, but it also included the cross. His eyes weren't on the crowd. He knew man's approval was so fickle and would come and go with the rising tide. Instead, he focused on the approval that mattered. He focused on his heavenly Father and doing what pleases him. That's where our focus should be as well. It doesn't matter if people like you or not. What matters is that God approves of you and the life you are living. Guys, seek first his kingdom and you will never be left disappointed or alone. Number two, Jesus' final teachings focused on truth. When I read the scriptures of Jesus overturning the temple tables and his discourse with the Pharisees, I am reminded that those who seek to portray Jesus as a weak, wimpy, tolerant, social justice snowflake have never read this portion of scripture. Instead, Jesus used his final days on earth to condemn such religious leaders who were perverting the worship of God and God's word so that they could gain power and profits. Doing his best Joey Lawrence impression, Jesus throws down a series of woes at the religious leaders. Okay, he didn't do a Joey Lawrence whoa impression, but it's what I think of every time I read the passage. Anyway, look at what Jesus said. Right there in front of God, the disciples and the crowds of people, he tells everyone exactly who the religious leaders are and why they are wrong. He accuses them of distorting the word of God. He says they're hypocrites, not practicing what they preach. They're using their position to gain power, popularity, and profits. They're keeping people out of heaven by presenting a twisted version of God's truth. He says they are professionals who appeared spiritual and godly, but they were really unrighteous and rebellious. He said they say good things about godly spiritual leaders of the past, you know, like the prophets, but they don't listen to them or follow their teachings or example. He said they are truly not committed to God and his word. Jesus didn't hold back. He spoke the truth to them. And we follow Jesus' example when we speak against false doctrines and false teachers today. When we consistently speak biblical truth, even if it isn't popular, we follow Jesus' example. Number three, Jesus focused on the future. As we read through the Gospel accounts of Passion Week, we see that a great deal of Jesus' final teachings focused on things I believe need more emphasis in today's church. On the Mount of Olives, he taught about heaven and hell, and the fact that whether we choose or reject God's offer of salvation determines in which location we will spend eternity. 
He talked about the rapture and the need to be following God wholeheartedly so we are prepared whenever it happens. He taught about the great tribulation and the final judgment. He said there would be a great falling away during the end times when many would call themselves Christians but would abandon true commitment to Christ for false teachings and immoral lifestyles. The words he spoke thousands of years ago could not be more relevant today. Guys, today we need to be on guard and be ready for the second coming of Christ. Each day we need to renew our commitment to wholeheartedly follow Jesus and obey God's word so that whether the rapture comes or we pass through eternity of natural causes, we will be rest assured to spend eternity with Jesus. This should also fuel our passion for evangelism as we recognize life is fleeting, but eternity is forever. Our goal isn't just to reach heaven, it's to take as many people with us as we can. Guys, we are called to reach the loss and to speak the truth of the Bible to other people. Well, guys, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back with more from the last week of Jesus' life. I know you're going to dig this. Like what you're hearing? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. God is looking for men with legendary grit. Do you want to be known as a legendary man of God? If so, then return with us to those thrilling days of yesteryear as we examine the lives of 10 men who understood what it takes to become a living legend. It takes legendary grit. From these men's lives, we not only see shining examples of legendary men, but we also see models we can follow to develop grit in our own lives. So saddle up. It's time to become the man God created you to be, a man of legendary grit. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God. Hey friends, Jason Torville here, and can I encourage you to make 2023 a year where you and your men come out to this year's Mantor. I love what Billy Sunday had written. He's a late great evangelist. And he said this, you can't measure manhood with a measuring tape around the bicep. You see, it doesn't matter how strong you are, how intellectual you are, manhood goes much deeper. Where do we learn to be a man? It's with other godly men. Make this year an investment in your men. And I hope to see you at Mantor 2023. Yep, you're listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Are you looking for legendary truth that makes a legendary man? Well, it's time to mount up and take part in this year-long Bible reading plan for Mantor Ministries that is designed to help you become a strong, on-fire, legendary man of God. The Ride or Die Daily Bible Plan features 52 devotionals on fundamental truths, six days of Bible reading, and a devotional on the seventh day. It has relevant topics for men to aid in spiritual growth as we look at the legendary truths all men of God need to know. Every week there's a weekly memory verse, and we have hand-selected Bible passages to keep you engaged all year. So it's time to saddle up and become a legendary man of God. For more information on the Ride or Die Daily Bible Plan, you can visit mantorministries.com slash Bible Plan, where you can either sign up to receive the free email version, or you can purchase your paperback copy of Ride or Die, the Daily Bible Plan. Guys, take advantage of this as we head into 2023 and become a man of the word. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. Don't forget to visit iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Hey everyone, Jamie Holden here from Mantor Ministries. I just wanted to let you know that the Mantor Ministries website has been updated for the 2023 Legendary Mantor Conferences. You can go to the website, find out all about the speakers, the dates, the locations, and we added something new this year. We added media packs that you can download to help promote the mentor to your church's men. The media packet has bulletins that you can print. It has a flyer you can print and hang up. There is specific promo videos to promote your specific event to the men in your church. There's a short version, a long version. 
There's a video that's a personal invite from me and a couple of other really awesome promo videos that you can use to promote this conference to your men. So make sure you visit MantorMinistries.com, download your media pack today, and start promoting the event now. And we're looking forward to seeing you at the Legacy Mantors. Also, the website's been updated that you can start registering now. The registration page is up, is up, it's set, it's ready to go. So make sure you visit MantorMinistries.com, start promoting the Legacy Mantors to your men. And I'm just so excited to see what God has this year through the Mantor Conference. Welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Welcome back, guys. As we continue to examine the last week of Jesus' life as we head into our celebration of Easter and the resurrection of Jesus. The fourth point I want to point out to you about what Jesus did during the last week of his life is Jesus modeled servanthood. The early events of Passion Week were public. But as the cross drew closer, Jesus' teaching became more private. On Thursday, we see him gather in the upper room celebrating the Passover with his disciples. Here he models two beautiful institutions that all Christians can follow. First, he modeled servanthood when he washed the disciples' feet. This simple act reminds all future followers of Christ that true leaders in the kingdom of God are, first of all, servants. Our calling is not to seek fame, fortune, and power, but rather to find ways to serve others and lead them into a relationship with Jesus. In communion, we see that Jesus' life was not taken from him. Instead, he laid it down willingly so that we could have a personal relationship with him. Seeing these two acts together reminds me of Philippians 2, 3-8, which says, Doing nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by being obedient to death, even death on a cross. Guys, no one is above being a servant. We need to follow Jesus' example and live the life of service to God and others. Guys, the fifth and final point I want to point out to you today is this. Jesus prayed. Leaving the upper room, Jesus knew that he could not face the horrors of the crucifixion without spending time in prayer. He recognized that before he could be the substitution for the world's sins, he needed to spend time with his heavenly Father, once again submitting his flesh to his divine purpose. As followers of Christ, we need to recognize the same need in our lives. Too often, we look at prayer as a have-to rather than a get-to. Men, prayer is not a burden. It is an amazing privilege. Like Jesus, we gain the strength and courage to face whatever comes in our lives when we spend time with our Heavenly Father. We can't do it alone. We need to spend time in prayer. We fulfill our destiny through the power of the Holy Spirit, and that power is found as we spend time alone with God in prayer and worship. These are just a few things that stood out to me as I've been reading through the Gospels. They've challenged me to make these things a priority in my own life. After all, if Jesus deemed them essential in the last week of his life, shouldn't I make them a necessary part of my everyday life? My challenge to you this week is this. Take some time and read through at least one of the accounts of the week between the triumphal entry and resurrection day. I guarantee it will give you a new perspective on the upcoming Easter holiday. And as you're reading, ask yourself, how can I emulate Jesus in my own life? Whether it be days or months, years or decades, what should I do with the time that I have left on this earth? The Mantor Guy's Final Thought Guys, it's a holiday. People are traveling, schools are closed. There are lots of preparations to be made for this weekend. And yet, it's important that we take time in all the busyness to remember the true horror of what Jesus endured for us on the cross. 
Sometimes I'm afraid that I read through it too quickly in scripture without truly grasping the horror, the pain, the humiliation, and the agony that Jesus endured in his body, mind, and spirit as he was crucified for our sins. My challenge to you today, read the gospel account of the crucifixion. Read it slowly. Take some time to process the depth of the suffering that Jesus went through. Pain and suffering that you and I deserve but don't have to experience because of his sacrifice. Read slowly. Let it sink into your spirit. Man, it wasn't a movie. He really suffered these inhumanities. He did it all for you and for me. And then we need to celebrate the fact that it didn't end at the cross. We sing it about at Christmas, and yet the day between Good Friday and Resurrection Day was truly the silent night and day. It was a Sabbath, and the people were forced to rest, to wait, to grieve, believing all was lost. And yet, behind the scenes, unknown to Jesus' followers, God had a plan. Today, this reminds us that no matter how bad it seems, God still has a plan. Hold on. Be faithful and watch what's coming. Celebrate the resurrection. Share the good news of what it means to others. Rejoice in freedom from sin and in eternity in heaven with God. Then work to bring as many people with you as possible. Happy Easter, guys. Well, guys, we're out of time for this week's podcast. As we wrap today, I want to thank you for giving me your time today to listen. I would love if you took a second and shared this podcast to your social media accounts. We'd love to be able to reach even more men and help them grow in their walk with God. We still have more conferences in 2023, guys. Make sure you attend your local mentor. You can find everything you need to know about this year's conferences on the website. So visit MantorMinistries.com for a complete list of locations, speakers, and while you're there, download a media packet for your mentor. Each media packet contains a variety of promo videos for you to use to promote the event to your men, as well as flyers and bulletin inserts you can print. God has big plans for this year's man tours. We've had tremendous responses, both in attendance and around the altar so far this year. Do not miss what God has for you. Well, guys, we are out of time for this week, but thank you for joining us again this week. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review wherever you get your podcast, and please share the podcast to your social media. Also, make sure to check out our books and resources at mantorministries.com and join the Legendary Truth Bible Plan as well. But once again, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again on the Mantor Guy Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Be sure to visit mantorministries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our mentor conferences. Hey guys, great to be with you today and to share a little bit with you today. I want to invite you to come out to Altoona, April 29th for Mantor. I am so excited to be a part of this, where a bunch of guys can get together, share the Word of God, and spend some time challenging one another and encouraging one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. It also says, you know, over a hundred times in scriptures that we need one another. We need one another to gather together for these times. So I want to encourage you, April 29th, come out and join us share with us. Let's be encouraged together. God bless you all. The Mentor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God.